Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Max. I've been wanting to do a sketchbook tour for a while and I just went on a two week trip and I finished the sketchbook. So I figured this would be a good one to start with. I'll start off with a little sticker tour because it's always fun to do that. Um, on this trip, I went from, I started uh, in Vancouver and then I went to Salt Lake City, Utah. And then at the end, I went to Montreal. So it was kind of random. I was originally supposed to go on a road trip with my sister to move her out to Salt Lake City, but she moved sooner than I expected. So um, I had some time at the beginning of it and the end of the two weeks I had off work. I've always wanted to go on like little solo sketching trips. I've done some in the past, but I've, I've been wanting to do more of those. So I thought I've always wanted to go to Vancouver and I've always wanted to go to Montreal. So I spent probably more than I should have on plane tickets to go to those two places. So the first sticker is where I stayed in Vancouver. I stayed in the Chinatown there, which was a really cool neighborhood. There was all these really cool restaurants and I went to this Chinese classical garden there, which I have a sketch of in here. And then, um, the second sticker is from my friend Kristen. Actually, both of these two are from her. Um, she lives in Salt Lake City, and she actually made a really cool video uh, about our hangout, so I'll put a little link to it if I can. Um, but yeah, she makes really cool art, and this is one of the designs I really like from her, and this one also. I really like this one because I feel like I'm a noticer. When I walk around, I love to look at things and observe the details in nature. This is from my friend Dalton, who hooks me up with lots of stickers. So I'm basically just always looking for places to put the stickers he sent me because I have so many. Um, this is a spe of specifically a special dinosaur because I bought him a t-shirt with this dinosaur on it for his birthday. And... It always makes me happy to see him wearing it. This is my sister's partner. It's some bike person. I uh, don't know exactly who it is. She gave it to me though, and I thought it was cool. And then this is some washi tape that Kristen made and I bought off of her when I was in Salt Lake City. I hope that the audio on this isn't too bad because it's just my GoPro and We'll see how that goes. This is a coffee shop that I went to with Kristen in Salt Lake City, or in Ogden, Utah, actually. We ended up in Ogden one day, and uh, it was an experience. Um, and so I wanted to commemorate that with the sticker. And then this is a bike shop that uh, is in Salt Lake City. This is from my new friend, Adam. Cawford, I think his last name is, who I met at the Salt Lake City figure drawing group. And he gave me this very satanic sticker. Um, I don't know what the story is behind that, but uh, I'm into it. And then this is my friend from Rochester, Scar, who has, uh, I guess it's their brand is Flower Pail Kids. Um, and he is a really cool artist in Rochester that I've been friends with for a while. And this is another one of Dalton's stickers. Um, I'm just going to go through everything, really. My sister got a hold of my sketchbook and wrote this nice quote in here. It says, I am the awareness that is aware of my attachment by Eckhart Tolle. And then she wrote this little poem for me that says, the sky is blue, the ground is brown, come on over and let's clown around, <laughs> which I love. And then she drew her partner, Julie. It's like when your little sibling uh, finds your stuff and like just leaves little <laughs> surprises everywhere. Except my sibling is an adult, which is cool. Um, I love you, Aubrey. All right, so um, this is from 2022. Um, 
I, I don't really know. Like, usually when I buy a new sketchbook, I have, like, an intention for it. I think originally this is going to be an observational sketchbook, and that's what this first sketch is. This is uh, a small town near where I'm from. And apparently I changed my mind because then the next few pages are automatic drawings, which is where you kind of just... Um, draw straight in ink and just draw whatever comes to your mind and freestyle it basically and I was in kind of a weird place when I started doing these I remember and I think this was sort of like a therapeutic thing and there's really no meaning behind it it's just kind of like free association drawings these I think were more calculated pages this one at least. Um, I think I was gonna fill this whole thing up with some like creatures like this, but I must have got bored. This was around the time when I quit illustration, so I think I was kind of like in a weird headspace. It was just kind of a weird time, but I really liked how this page came out. Um, I want to do more of these automatic drawings. Here's another one. These are just some observational sketches from around that time. More creatures. And that's the end of that period. So from this point on, the sketchbook was empty for like two years. And then I picked it up. I was looking for a sketchbook to bring on this trip. And I found this and I was like, well, I'll just finish this sketchbook up. And, uh, instead of buying a new one. This is from a gift bag that, from a sticker I bought, from this sticker um, in Chinatown at the Classical Garden. So this is the beginning of the trip. Um, a lot of artists do these like airplane sketches and so it's not like an original thing really, but uh, it is a fun like way to pass the time on the plane and um, airplanes are such a weird perspective challenge, so I did a few of those on this trip. This was, uh, I had so many layovers and flights, but this was from San Francisco to Vancouver on my way out to Vancouver. I remember there was a woman sitting next to me, and she was kind of watching me while I was drawing it, and then she said she wished she had the ability to record her experiences like this, so it made me feel grateful that... I have this drawing thing that I do because it's a really cool way to document your life. This was, I think, the first day in Vancouver. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a little bit sick. Um, but my Airbnb host was actually an architect, and she had a lot of great recommendations for me to check things out. Um, but yeah, this is a classical Chinese garden in Vancouver. Um, it was the first classical Chinese garden built in North America, I think, in 1908. Um, and it was really peaceful. I spent like two or three hours there and it was raining and all the walkways were kind of covered. So I could just kind of sit and watch the rain and draw. And I remember this, it said, is like one of the places where the scholar who would live in a like a, an estate like this, he would go up here to think and do scholarly things. Um, the next day, I think it was, no, probably the same day, uh, I walked, I think it's called like the inlet in Vancouver, and you can like walk along it, and I was sitting here sketching this, and funny story, um, as I was drawing it, I heard this sound behind me. It was like a, like a <laughs> sound, <laughs> like a fart sound. And I, at first I didn't really think much about it. And then I kind of like got the sense that it was directed at me. And I turned around and there was just this guy standing like 20 yards behind me. And I looked and he was staring directly at me and he had made the sound and he was just smiling. And at first I was like, all right, whatever. And then I started to feel like a little concerned, like, 
is this guy going to attack me or something? Um, it was really weird. So that's the story for this sketch. Um, and then actually um, this bridge here is the bridge to Granville Island, which is like an industrial island where they mix concrete, but there's also tourist shops and it's very lively. Um, so I walked like along the river here and then up over the bridge onto the island. And this next page is a view down from the bridge. So these are the silos from this page. Um, so I'm like standing like right up here looking down. And it was like very loud and then the sidewalk was super small and there was just lots of cars riding by super fast and it was super windy. And I kept thinking I was going to drop my sketchbook off the bridge, but I didn't. So that's good. But yeah, here's like some of the concrete trucks. This is like a art school. It was this really cool architectural style. It's very industrial. And this is just the city beyond. This is once I was on the island, I did a sketch looking up, up at the bridge. These are like the on ramps to get onto the bridge. And this is like the way you go down to get onto the island. I was gonna do another boat sketch here, but I never got around to it. This is walking back on like the other side of the inlet, and this is looking back towards the city. Um, Vancouver is such a cool city. It's so modern and shiny and clean, and it feels very well designed, like the urbanism, and there's bike lanes everywhere. But yeah, these, these kind of high-rise residential towers were really uh, like common there, and so I wanted to do a drawing to capture that. I think this was on my second day there. Um, I rent I rented an e-bike and there's this big park called Stanley Park and you can ride your bike all the way around it. It ended up being very touristy, but um, it was still pretty fun. And I stopped at a few points and did these drawings. This is like some industrial stuff. Um, I think this is over on like no North Vancouver. And then this is like the bike path that I was riding. And there's this big rock that you ride by and all these cool shipping boats. It was very peaceful. I've been wanting to draw more clouds, so I took an opportunity to do that. Um, I think this is the next day. No, same day. Uh, I took a sea bus to North Vancouver, so basically to like here, um, and I did some drawings of people on the, it's basically just a ferry, but they call it a sea bus. And then when I got there, there's this thing called the alley, which is like this little indoor mall thing with nice restaurants and things like that. So I got a cappuccino and drew the little coffee bar. Um, I was trying to get as many cappuccinos as I could on this trip because <laughs> I love cappuccinos. This was also in North Vancouver. Um, it was kind of like a more industrial area that they kind of revitalized to make it like uh, touristy. And this was like a crane that was probably used at one point, but now it's more of just like a tourist thing. And I wanted to draw that. And then this was the last day, and I flew out to go to Salt Lake City. So I think this was like really early, like 6 a.m. at the airport, and I was just drinking a cappuccino and looking out the window. I love airports because I love airport architecture, and there's just so much cool structural things happening and um, lots of glass and natural light, which architects love. And uh, yeah, you can just look, sit and look out the window and draw the airport stuff. This is on the flight, another perspective challenge. Um, it had a window seat, which is good. This was at the Seattle airport and I think I had like a pretty big layover. So I figured I would dive in and do a detailed sketch of the airport.
And then this was my first day in Salt Lake City, I think. And me and my friend Kristen met up, went to a coffee shop, and they had a little bouquet of flowers. So I drew that. I love to draw flowers. And then Kristen and I went to somewhere. I forgot to fill in the location here. <laughs> but it was like this little creek, and they had a little waterfall. And we sat out there and just did some drawing. This is all in her video, which you should check out. It's a lot more dynamic than this video. <laughs> um, and then this was at a coffee shop. I just wanted to do some more of the automatic drawing. And it's so weird. I get like so in my head when I do these kinds of drawings and I overthink it. But I think it's just because it's not my natural way of drawing. Um, but I want to do more of these because it's just interesting what your mind comes up with when you just let it flow. This was one day I took my sister's partner's car out to Little Cottonwood Creek and uh, I did some little like hiking excursions, pretty mild, but I'm, I'm more so just wanted to go out there and draw. So I hiked up to this little waterfall and there was some cool boulders. And then this was like a view of the other side of the canyon. And then I walked up the, the trailways and there was this ruins of some old church or something. Um, it looked like it was maybe like a church or some kind of special building because it had these nice arched windows and uh, it looked more, it looked, someone said maybe it was like a mining thing, but it looked a little bit too elaborate to be just a mining thing to me. And then I was meditating by the river and then I drew this, which normally it would be very challenging, but I think I was in such a relaxed state that I just kind of took my time with it and just listened to the river. This was in Ogden. Um, we ended up there. We were going to go there to help my sister buy a bike or something. And then me and Kristen were just hanging out there. So this was at the brewing company. I didn't know what this was at first, but I think it's a coffee roaster. So coffee roasters are actually pretty sick to draw. And then we sat by a creek and I drew this and then we walked down this bike path and I drew the mountains. There's so many good mountains to draw in Utah. And then I drew Kristen and <laughs> we both laughed pretty hard because I sort of messed this drawing up, but it was, uh, it was a good challenge to try to draw on straight ink. And then I think this was one night um, I was just drawing pictures off my phone. We had gone on a bike ride and I saw this old van thing. So I took a picture of it and then later on I just drew it based on the picture. And then I was drinking a beer and this was another picture I had of some kind of lizard that I saw. And this was at a coffee shop. This is the art studio building that Kristen has her studio in. It's called the Guthrie. And it's this really cool old building. The inside was really cool. Just like super old stairway with wood everywhere. And it seemed like it really hadn't been changed much since its original construction. This was one evening I went to this park called Sugar House Park and the sun was kind of setting. So I was working quickly, but I wanted to capture this just the view of the mountains with the trees. This is another automatic drawing. Um, not much to say really. This is Kristen's studio. I went over to hang out with her one day and I thought it would be a good time to make a super detailed calculated sketch while she was working. So that was really fun just to draw all the details. It's cool to draw someone's art studio because there's just so many fun little details to draw. 
And then that night we went to figure drawing and I hadn't done figure drawing since before COVID. So like 2019 and it took me a few attempts to kind of get back into the flow of it, especially working like in a smaller sketchbook like this. Um, but yeah, this was just one pose. I did a few different drawings of it. And then this was, they had two models. It was cool. I had never been to a figure drawing thing where they had two models so you could pick which one you wanted to draw. And I think these were like one minute poses, so they're pretty quick. And then these were longer. I started getting kind of funky with it, <laughs> making it kind of crazy. And then this was like a longer pose, like 30 or 40 minutes, I think. So I really took my time on that. And then this was like an eight minute pose, or I think I had eight minutes left of the 40 minute session. So I just did like a more zoomed in view of the model's head. These are book and movie recommendations from my friend Emily. And then this was my flight to Montreal. Um, this is my best airplane view, I think, that I did. And I feel like I had really started to get the hang of it and I was in, my, my drawing juices were flowing at this point. So I think this one turned out pretty well. And I was making notes about the different people, like this guy kept the window closed, which I don't know when I'm on a plane, I like to have the window open and look out, but yeah, he just kept it closed. This girl was on Facebook the whole time. She liked cute dogs, beauty products, and babies. And this guy was asleep the whole time and his face did not turn out so well. <laughs> and I had a seat to myself, which was nice. And this is my first day in Montreal. I remember like when I got there, I was just kind of, for some reason I felt depressed and I was just walking around. And I think that's why this is kind of like a weirdly dark drawing. I was kind of just like scribbling um, and hatching it. And then I continued to walk around and I started to feel better, I remember. And I was sitting here on this bench in this Outremont neighborhood probably not pronouncing that right, but it was cool. They had the whole street closed off and everyone was just eating gelato and hanging out and there was kids running around, which is always nice, a nice buzzing, lively neighborhood. Um, I just love the architecture in Montreal, super old, just really nice European architecture. It's probably like the most European city I've ever been to in North America. Um, I've heard Quebec City is even more so. And then this, I was doing so many drawings this day, but this was at a park that I went to, um, I think in the same neighborhood. And uh, there was a lot of people sitting around, but I didn't draw any of them. I was just trying to draw the, the view. I really liked how I did the trees with this one. I don't know. like. At first I was doing the more detailed leaf outline, which I usually do, but then there was just so many trees that I started simplifying it, and I really liked the way that turned out. I think this was the same day. <laughs> I was just walking all over the place. Um, this is a monument near somewhere. Um, but there's these cool lion statues. So I did a sketch of that. And then this is also part of the monument. There's all these figures and this is nearby. This one was actually the next day. Um, I met up with my friend Celia who lives in Montreal and we chilled out in a park and I just drew one of the uh, more brutalist um, high rises. There's a lot of like brutalism and kind of like mid-century modern type architecture there as well. And these were some of the people in that same park when, when I was hanging out with Celia. And then I think we split off and I went to a cafe and uh, got a cappuccino, which I drew. And then I walked around a little bit more saw this really cool building. There's just so much cool architecture, so drawable, so many details. 
So I just stood up. I was just standing like against a building drawing this. Sometimes I like to find a bench, but if the uh, subject is good enough, I'll just stand. And then this was another cool little scene on that same walk. This is like a little junkyard thing going. But I really like this dome thing sticking up over the wall. And then my friend recommended this cafe called Ken Cafe Santropol. I guess it's like the little Portugal neighborhood. And this cafe was beautiful. Um, maybe I'll throw some footage up if I have any. Uh, but it was like this outdoor patio out back and it was just very eclectic and like artsy and it felt very natural. And this was like a chai iced tea I got. And I also got a sandwich that was delicious. It was like, I think it was all vegan and everything was just really good. So if you ever go to Montreal, I definitely recommend this cafe. And then this was after I ate, um, this was like a row of houses that viewed the park. And this was just a really cool house. Then I kind of sat in the park for a while and drew people. I was trying to practice drawing just um, people in motion. It's so hard because you kind of have to like take a snapshot with your mind and then remember what they looked like because they're gone by the time you even start putting ink down. And then I was trying to draw some cars just because that's something I want to get better at. This is St. Joseph's Oratory, which is a huge cathedral. Um, I thought it was much older, but it was finished in the 60s, I think. And from the outside, it looks like an older European cathedral, but on the inside, it's very um, kind of brutalist, like modernism architecture. It kind of surprised me when I went inside. Um, but it sits up on top of the Mount Royal, I guess, the big hill. And um, it was near my Airbnb, so I actually went up there like every day. At the end of the day, I would sit up there and drink a beer on the steps and just look out over the city. Um, it was such a cool building, not just for the architecture, but just the where, the where it was placed and the view of the city. And then this was my flight back home. More airport stuff. And then on one of my layovers, I drew, I think, Toronto Airport. Um, I wanted to do some interior airport sketching, so I actually almost missed my flight. The, like, the way they boarded the flight was way quicker than I thought. Usually boarding takes longer, but I guess because it was a small flight, they boarded super quickly, and then I heard my name on the loudspeaker in the airport, so I was like, oh crap. So I actually had to finish this later because I didn't want to miss my flight. And then this was when I got home. I was feeling very sad, <laughs> apparently. Um, yeah, I kind of got bummed out when I got home. I actually came down with COVID like the day after I got home. And, uh, you know, you get the post-trip blues and you're also sick, so. I feel like my feelings were valid. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to start drawing people more again. I go through little spurts where I practice drawing people a lot and I'm kind of in one of those phases right now. So yeah, I was just doing straight ink drawings. And then these were a few more. And then when I was starting to feel better, I went to a park nearby here and just drew this tree. I was kind of sick still, but. And then more people. More people. I feel like I was really starting to get the hang of it here. It takes a while to get back into it. Um, I think, yeah, these are all still straight ink. I actually started doing it in another sketchbook after this and I started using some pencil just to structure out the faces a little bit more, but these worked out pretty well. So yeah. This is my scratch pad for pens. And uh, yeah, so that's the sketchbook. And 
this is a 30 minute video so it's not too bad i hope it was somewhat entertaining and um i definitely want to do more sketchbook tours i have like 30 or 40 sketchbooks filled and i just haven't gotten around to doing any of these but i thought this would be a good opportunity to dig in and do a sketchbook tour so i hope you liked it and have a good day